Hi, in this video, we are going to learn about the newly added activities in the persistent uh, activity set, uh, which is the complete task, the get form task, uh, get task data, and uh, a property, uh, kind of like an advancement that has happened on the assigned task, uh, which gives you the ability of reassigning the tasks as well. So to get the activities package in the first place, uh, we are going to click on the manage packages, uh, go to the official feed, and search for uh, the persistent activity packages. And uh, you will get the latest version uh, from here itself, right? Uh, once you uh, install the latest version, you can simply uh, click, on, click on save. Activity package will get available for you to use in the activities pane. So uh, once the activity is installed uh, in the activities pane under long running workflow, you will uh, get the activities and within the task you will get the uh, newly added activities uh, which is the complete task the get form task the get task data uh, the forward task and obviously there is an improvement on the assigned task as well and we are going to look at all of these by taking uh, an example use case and for this particular example use case we are going to look at the we're going to look at the workflow uh, that we had of uh, travel expense approval, wherein uh, the confirmation task was created for the user once uh, confirmed by the travel manager. It goes uh, to an external system uh, to be approved by the direct manager. And then once the direct manager approves, it comes back to the user for, uh, for their feedback. And in this particular uh, flow, we, we did not talk about uh, the uh, SLAs, but this time we are going to introduce some SLAs and we, we are going to see how the new activities are going to help you in managing those SLAs automatically as well. So uh, let's imagine that once the validation task is created, the time given to the user to complete this validation task is two days and beyond which it has to be escalated to the uh, new uh, escalation manager, whoever is handling this particular task. So this needs to be uh, taken care of. Similarly, let's imagine that once the external task is created, uh, the time given for this particular task to be uh, taken action on is two days. And if, if no action has been uh, detected for over two days, the task should auto complete. And this is also something that we are going to take care of when we are designing the workflow. And the last, Last one, uh, in the feedback task, the uh, if, if the user does not take action for uh, uh, two days again, so we are going to keep the SLA consistently uh, two days uh, just for uh, the sake of simplicity and uniformity for all the levels. Uh, so if the user does not take any action for two days, we are going to forward this task uh, to the escalation manager as well. So uh, we have three scenarios wherein we are going to uh, uh, use the newly created activities first to reassign the activities. Uh, if, if no action has been taken on the validation task uh, to auto complete the uh, external task, if no action has been taken on the uh, external task and also to forward the task, if uh, no action has been taken on the feedback task by the uh, current user. And to build all these things, uh, we are going to provide you a skeletal uh, workflow that is already uh, divided into these three specific um, um, workflows. First is the reassign task, the second is the autocomplete task, and third is the uh, for forward of the form task, the feedback task. So we'll start with the reassignment of the task, and in here you are going to have a few of the things already done for you. Let me walk you through that. Uh, the first call is done to get the list of all the um, validation tasks that has been created uh, so far. And then iteratively, we are going to look at each of the tasks. And uh, for each of the tasks, we, we are going to compare the date with the relative date. By the way, uh, the relate, relative date or the reference date for all these workflows have been set two days ahead of, the, of today's date so that the SLA breach can be demonstrated in this particular example. Um, so if if the SLA um, breach is detect, 
uh, detected, which is what uh, the condition suggests here, we are going to uh, uh, reassign that task uh, to the escalation manager, right? Uh, so there is only one thing that we need to do here. We have to just simply drag and drop the assigned task. And uh, we are going to uh, provide the correct inputs to this. I have uh, I have the task user assignment prepared here, uh, and that is what I have to uh, pass 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 here as well. So I simply have to write new because it uh, accepts a list of user assignment. And then from, and in that form, I have to mention the task user assignment that I have. So this is what I was talking about. Uh, the task assignment type is a new addition to assign task uh, activity, wherein you, apart from the option of assigning, you also have the option of reassigning. And uh, just by doing that, you will, you will be reassigning this particular task according to the task user assignment that you have set in here. Right, uh, just like that, you will be able to take care of reassignment of the task, uh, uh, specifically the validation task that is getting created. Um, now let's work on uh, auto completion of the external task. Again, uh, here you will get some uh, work already done for you. The, the major heavy lifting has been done apart from the newly uh, introduced activities. Uh, so let me walk you through the workflow first. Uh, the first activity uh, is a request to actually uh, fetch all the uh, task uh, of type uh, external task, and then uh, whose title is about uh, travel and approve receipt, and whose status is not equals to completed. So based on these uh, conditions, I'll get the uh, list of all the tasks that is not completed and that is of type uh, external and that has a specific title, which is really relate closely related to the workflow that uh, we have built. Um, once we get this, we, uh, we convert it into a JSON object um, and then we iterate it over it to uh, deal with all the tasks one at a time. And in here, we have to do a couple of things. First of all, uh, we will use get task data to uh, get the uh, task data in, uh, into a task object form. The get task data activity uh, takes the task ID as an input, which we will uh, for, uh, get in this particular uh, case from the, uh, from the item itself. And I can write something like item ID. This will give me uh, the task ID of the item that we are dealing with. And uh, the task object will hold the task ob object for me uh, going forward. Next, we again match the SLA condition and uh, uh, we see if the difference is uh, greater and equals to SLA days. Uh, in this case, it is set to two. And then we, um, we will go ahead uh, and uh, if this condition is met, we are going to complete the task. And for completing the task, uh, we have this activity here called complete task that we can drag and drop in here. We can provide the task uh, ID. Now that we have the task object, we can simply do um, task object dot ID dot value to get the task ID. We have to provide the action and the action has going to, uh, is going to be approved since uh, uh, after the SLA uh, is breached, we have to auto approve the task. And then, uh, that's uh, pretty much it. This will uh, complete the external task for me uh, and I can proceed with my process. Now uh, let's, let's complete the last workflow that will help us in forwarding the uh, form task for the current user. And uh, again, the heavy lifting is done for you. You will uh, need to deal with just the new uh, activities that has been introduced. So let me walk you through the workflow. The first activity is an HTTP request to the orchestrator to get the uh, 
information for the current user and using that uh, current user we are going to uh, pass the uh, current user information when we are filtering the uh, form task because we can only uh, forward the task that has that has been assigned to the current user um, and not the task that is uh, that is in somebody else's bucket so in here we are going to use uh, get form task to get all the form task based on uh, certain conditions and in here we are going to use certain uh, filter and that filter uh, is something that is given in here we have to set the title we have to check for the status and we have to check for the assigned to user id and the user id that i'm getting is uh, is something that I have extracted in a, in just the step above uh, this particular step so uh, for get form task, uh, I can set this particular filter up and that's my filter and the output of the information is something that I can get as an output in the task objects. Another thing uh, to take a note of uh, in this particular a spot is that there is uh, something called reference that has been added and this reference can be used uh, to create uh, filters as well uh, this reference is something that you will be mentioning in your um, uh, main workflow as well where this task is getting created uh, so in here if you see this for this particular task uh, in the properties you will get uh, the reference field the reference field uh, this reference field has to be set with uh, some kind of value that that can be used by uh, get form task um, activity uh, to filter it out um, uh, for you when it, wherever this activity is being used. Right. Uh, so this uh, get form task will help you in getting all the uh, form task according to the filter that has been set so far, and then you are going to again check if the uh, SLA has been breached. And if the SLA has been breached, you have to forward the, this task uh, to the escalation manager. And for that, we simply have to use uh, an activity called forward task. We can drag and drop it here, just below the helpful comment that has been placed there. And I can do something like item.id.value to uh, suggest which item I need to uh, forward. And then uh, I'm going to use uh, Escalation Manager as the person to which this task uh, needs to be uh, uh, forwarded to. I also need to provide some relevant uh, comment to this particular activity um, so that uh, this comment gets uh, registered while forwarding the task. And for that, I'm going to um, I'm going to provide a meaningful uh, comment. Which is, which is going to be something like this. The task was not acted upon for uh, the number of duration for which it was not acted upon. And then uh, because of which we are forwarding it to the escalation manager. So that's pretty much it. Now, just remember that uh, whenever this particular workflow runs, it uh, runs two days ahead uh, of today's date. So it is always going to uh, breeze the SLA that we have kept for all the tasks. So uh, let's start uh, running it and uh, see it in action. And uh, we can run it from here. So it is going to create the confirmation task. And it has now um, created the a validation task and it has gone into the uh, wait state. And this, I can see it uh, in here in my pending actions. I have this uh, new task that has been created for me uh, to be acted uh, to take action on. So let's suppose I did not take action uh, on this particular task for two days and, my, and the robot that is uh, maintaining my SLAs and detecting the SLA breeze to take action on uh, kicks in. That will be this task. And once it runs, it'll get all the tasks. And this could be any number of tasks, not just the one that is created. It could be uh, all the tasks that is uh, uh, that has breached the SLA. Uh, 
these uh, will be escalated uh, forward. As you can see, that escalation has been matched for the task ID and it must have been reassigned. So if I see it here, I have the same task ID. And uh, if I refresh this, it should just vanish from here. And if I go to manage actions, I should see it uh, in the pending state, but in somebody else's bucket. This is the escalation manager. And if I see on the action summary, I will see that uh, this was originally assigned to me, but this has been reassigned to uh, Anjan Gogoi, uh, who is the escalation manager at the moment. So uh, once this is handled uh, by the escalation manager, right now I don't have uh, access to that ID. So I'll, I'll simply go back and reassign it to myself. But uh, uh, let's suppose that uh, this was assigned to uh, Anjan Gogoi and he takes action on it. And for taking the action, uh, he'll simply go ahead and approve this based on the value that uh, that is there, right? And I approve this. Once approved, I'll be able to move forward uh, in my main workflow. So my main workflow goes uh, back, it kicks back in. And it uh, creates the external task uh, and waits for it. Again, imagine that uh, nobody took action on the external task as well. Um, and the external task has breached the SLA. Uh, that is, two days has gone by without any action. Um, it And then the robot that is managing the SLAs uh, kicks in. And the auto autocomplete uh, process starts to run. And this autocomplete uh, task is going to take all the external task uh, that has been waiting uh, for more than two days and will complete the task. So once this task is completed, let's check it on the uh, panel as well. If I uh, refresh this, this should just move to the completed state. There it is. So once completed, our main workflow will uh, resume. And then it has created the uh, last task. Uh, that is the uh, form feedback task that has been assigned to uh, me again. If I go ahead and see it in here on my pending states, uh, pending uh, actions, I have this action that I need to take uh, uh, action on. But let's suppose again, um, I did not take action for a couple of days and my SLA uh, managing bot triggers in and it runs the uh, forward form task workflow from here. What it will do is it will uh, get all the items, all the action tasks that has been created for me. And then it is going to check for the SLA breach. And because it was breached, it is going to forward it uh, to the escalation manager. How it looks on the action one. And now if I refresh this, it will just vanish from my pending uh, items. And if I go to manage actions, uh, it is going to be uh, assigned to uh, the escalation manager. And if I see on the action summary, the comment that I provided uh, will be visible in here as well. The task was not acted upon for two days, forwarding it to the escalation manager. And that's it. That's how you can uh, manage the SLAs from the robots using the uh, new activity set as well. Just uh, for a quick recap, what we saw is uh, a collection of new activities that has been uh, added to the uh, persistent um, activity set, uh, namely the complete task, the forward task, the get form task, and get task data. We saw the newly added parameter to assign task, wherein uh, we get the capability of reassigning the task uh, from one user to the other. And using which we all we created a workflow that is managing uh, auto managing the SLAs uh, for one of the processes uh, that has been created uh, for Action Center. Thank you for watching.